I'm here today with Gabriel Andreessen. He's the co-founder and president of Innovis Energy. They create innovative energy solutions for sustainability and savings. And we were just talking about learning to live in tension. Prior to starting Innovis Energy, I had been at a couple different roles, nine years in one and six to seven in another. And in each one of those situations, I'm not somebody that likes to make moves. I don't like transition generally, but learning to live in tension is learning to be okay with transition because there's transition happening all the time. And at the same time of having great victories, selling a lot, experiencing great things in my work, also recognizing in both of those positions towards the end of my employment that the wind within each organization had changed and I knew something was happening with me or I needed to make a change, but realizing that the wind shifts, but it's not okay. Immediate it's, there's a change in the air. There's something different that's happening. And the ultimate sort of place that brought me to in both of those situations was something new, but learning to be comfortable while that's undefined. So having things undefined in your life or your career and being comfortable with that because it's never one or the other. It's always fuzzy logic, somewhere in between the extremes. I don't know if that makes sense. How do you get comfortable with the undefined? There's this really interesting word. It begins with an A, it's called acceptance. And learning acceptance is learning what's in my control and learning what's out of my control. And this little thing is on my office wall because often that's where the battle is. I can find myself facing fears when I'm feeling out of control, when the reality is in most situations in my life, I'm out of control anyways, and I'm okay with that. So do you practice acceptance on a daily basis? Pretty much on a daily basis. Yep. So what does that look like for somebody who hasn't necessarily done that before? It starts with recognizing what you're in control of and what you're not in control of. And it's quite a, it's quite a journey learning acceptance, but being okay with the feeling of being out of control. So we know there's a lot of things in this world we cannot control. And how do we become okay with that feeling? When you experience it more and more. What you can, if you begin to take a step back inside and identify the emotions tied to feeling out of control, then recognizing what that trigger point is and going actually, oh, I can see that's a trigger point. And that's based in fear as opposed to trust. And there's a beginning of the process. So how does this, how do you practice this within the energy sector? That's a great question. I'll tie it right in. Earlier this year, I had a couple bad nights and maybe there weren't a couple bad nights. Maybe there were a couple great nights because I found myself tossing and turning with fear around one or two individuals that worked for me. And probably two in the morning, I got up, went downstairs pulled out my journal and asked myself this question, what am I afraid of with respect to these two people that were underperforming for my company? Because I really love people. I value people that if you have love and value for people, it creates a great culture in your business. But in some sense, I was afraid of holding them accountable and also afraid that confronting would lead them to shrink to shame and shame generally doesn't help us. So when I wrote that down in my journal, like I'm afraid that their failure would be on my head. Once I identified that I was able to go, oh, that's not a reasonable fear. In fact, let's go a little step further. Am I really helping that person or these people by allowing them to not do their job well, which doesn't say that I control them, but it does say, okay, my responsibility is to make sure that my company's running well. 
And if it's not running well, am I enabling somebody by not holding them accountable because I'm afraid that I might bring shame into their life? So there's a lot of freedom on the other side. I actually had to let somebody go. It was difficult, but I found it to be very freeing. So that was the action that came from digging deep within. In that specific situation, yes. Yeah. So what are some of the biggest problems you think we need to solve right now in energy? Within the energy business, we're confronting a pretty significant problem. And the problem is we have a fixed amount of supply. And most of that supply, there are exceptions to this. There's solar that's being consistently added to the grid, which is helpful. There's wind energy that's being consistently added to the grid, and that's helpful. But the big issue is that we're industry for years and years in the United States, North America has increased and increased. While there's a sort of sentiment in the public eye that we don't want to add power plants to the grid to supply energy. And so what inevitably happens is supply and demand. If our demand continues to increase, but our supply doesn't, the cost goes up. So we're doing some work in Austin, Texas. The utility rates about a year ago down there were as low as four, five cents a kilowatt hour just to give you a range. Our business is based in Massachusetts. We have five offices from Naples, Florida, up to Grand Rapids, Michigan. So we have a pretty good feel of the industry. In Massachusetts, this past winter, so winter of 2023, I was paying as much as 45. One of my friends was paying, I think, 53 cents a kilowatt hour. That's a 10x difference. And the reason for that is most of the power in the Northeast is generated by natural gas. And there is a sentiment in the country that natural gas is a dirty fuel and is adding carbon. There's no question it adds carbon to the atmosphere. But unless we augment our supply significantly with renewable, then this is what we're going to see. Now, certainly the war in Ukraine affected natural gas supply. There's also been, uh, I think, a pinching off of the supply, a limiting of the supply. I know that the current administration has now approved a pipeline, I believe from Canada down into New England for this purpose to provide natural gas. If our intent is to decarbonize, which is to say move from fossil fuels to electricity for transportation, for heating and cooling, cooling obviously, but for heating, then what's going to happen is we're going to load the grid up even more. If we load the grid up even more without opening up that natural gas supply, then the trend is always going to be for power to be really expensive in the winter because it's during the heating season in the New England area. I think that this can be generally translated across the country. As we electrify, we're going to add more load. We need to offset that added load either by energy efficiency or by increasing supply via powering the power plants that we have. So there's the problem. Part of your business so attacking that problem and solving. Yeah. It. So a big part of what we do at Anovus Energy is we go into commercial customers, generally large customers, find places to offset their electricity and fuel usage by using more efficient technologies. So if our listeners wanted to get in touch with you or your company to find out about this more, how could they do that? Right through our website, which is innovusenergy.com. There's a link they could link through. I also have a fledgling effort that brings a tremendous amount of fulfillment to me as a person. And that's doing weekly video posts, which don't really have to do with energy efficiency. They have more to do with business principles and life principles. And you can find me on LinkedIn. It's Gabriel Andreessen, not Anderson. There's probably only one of me on LinkedIn. And I do weekly vlogs or video posts or one to two minutes long. And I find a lot of people find them very insightful. Thank you, Gabriel Andreessen, for coming on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, with Cosmic Web Design Development. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.